Hello and welcome folks to another episode in the series about how I make my dog leg sloyd knives. I decided to walk you through this episode rather than just typing everything down. So um, for the sheath, or rather the liner that we're gonna carve today, I like to use straight grain birch. There's quite a few different hardwoods you can use, but I found this material to be easy to carve, very tough as well for exposed liners. So I'm just gonna grab my trusty old Grand Fosbrooks wildlife hatchet there. That was my first proper carving axe actually. Put some straight bevels on. So first of all, I'm gonna take the bark off just to have a look um, if there's any branches hidden. And I'm just gonna mark myself a little square or rather rectangular um, cross section. Just a little bit of a, of a guide when axing out. Don't forget to make your relief cuts when you axe out pieces like this. It's gonna make it way easier to work accurately. Watch your fingers there, dude. You can see very easily here how the straight grain birch is really aiding me in axing out a square and straight piece. These little Japanese Tajima folding saws are really the best for greenwood carving. And um, yeah, pretty good eye measurement there, I guess. So this is gonna be two liners, four pieces all together. So make sure to split safely, perpendicular to yourself. And now we're just gonna make sure to establish as straight phases as possible with our ax. Don't get too finicky here. I wanna also mention that this wood is still green and I left a little bit more meat on it for possible warpage during the drying process, but the straight grain wood is definitely gonna help with that. So here we go. Um, you can definitely tell the difference in the sound between the wet and the already cured pieces for my Lester, my liner. And in between, I just put the stuff into a paper bag for drying. So here we go. I just gonna mark my blade. In this case, it's a Mora 106 on a piece of cardboard and I'm gonna leave a little bit of room in left and right just a little bit of wiggle room to so to say and then establish about a five millimeter shoulder which is gonna be the gluing shoulder of course for a wooden sheath or wooden liner you can play here a little bit with designs in comes my very very beloved Japanese little shear and um, yeah just cutting my little template out as I said, play around here a little bit, whatever style you want to do, but make sure to have about four to five millimeters on each side of the, um, the fullest to say, where the knife goes in, just in order to have a good glue up connection. At this point, I'm trying to make the um, faces of the, the inside faces of the sheath as straight as possible. There is gonna be a final step to make them 100% true, but here I'm already doing a lot of the work and especially when I'm carving out the, the inside of the sheath, I don't wanna have everything too wonky because otherwise later, as you're gonna see, I'm not gonna run into a lot of trouble. So far, so good, I'd say. And again, don't worry about there being any gaps. There's gonna be a final truing step. So now I'm just gonna trace my little template onto the inside of the wooden lester and make sure to flip it around when you put it on the other side. Um, this might be, a, I don't know, sounding a little bit silly, but it's not like it hasn't happened to me. And there you go. And that's that. So in comes the axe again. Surprise! I just didn't want to waste any time here just carving that part off. But this also doesn't have to be too close because we're still gonna carve it a little bit later. But um, I just wanted to take some extra meat off. So here you go. This is the heart piece, so to say, of this entire tutorial. How am I gonna hollow this sheath? accurately out with only a knife so first of all i'm doing two stop cuts about three millimeters deep on each side just using the tip of my sloyd knife be careful here not to slip and cut yourself 
And this is basically a V cut that is establishing a first um, cut down to the, um, the vertical stop cut that I just made. You can work yourself down to this angle um, if you want to step by step. This is about a, yeah, I would say a 35 to 40 degree angle. It's already a lot of material taken out. It doesn't have to be that much in the beginning. But um, I just like doing it that way. But I definitely started slower in the beginning. So here you can see that there is already a middle piece established. I don't know really how to put that in words, but I hope that the pictures are helping. And now I'm doing a type of shearing cut. I'm definitely mostly pushing with the thumb or the fingers of the other hand. So this is not my right hand, it's just pushing forward. It is actually more a pivoting and pressing of my left thumb and on the in this case here is the same later you're gonna see that there's also my fingers of the left hand coming in so it's definitely important to have a lot of control here and go very slowly so I'm using my hook knife here but it's not necessary I'm just taking out a little bit of the inside of this little bit of a um, hill that is established in the middle there but I don't have to use a hook knife here. So you can carve the entire inside of the sheath just using your Sloyd knife. If you have a hook knife lying around, that's of course helping as well. Sorry for my capping in the way there. Didn't really realize that. But I think you can see how the very small radius of my hook knife is helping um, taking a little bit of material off. But like I said, it's not 100% necessary. You can do the whole thing with an ax and a knife, with a knife only. So I think now it becomes a little bit clearer how the process is going to go. And it's basically just repeating itself over and over. Whenever I feel like there is the stop cut is not deep enough or it gets stuck, um, some of these wood chips, I'm just going over with the knife tip once more. And the birch is actually very, very nice um, for this type of work. I thought it's going to be um, a lot harder. I've done it with some other woods and birch in, in Canada. Um, this Austrian birch here is tough, but it actually works really, really nicely for this type of project. Towards the tip, just basically use your knife tip um, straight on the sheath and just put it at a little bit of an angle. It's a little bit hard to explain that. I hope I did a good job there. Play around a little bit. Um, if you make a mistake, not too much is lost at that point. Um, it's pretty quick to get here. There you go. I made this quite deep at this point. Like I said, there's three millimeter shoulders on each side and we're gonna see in a moment why it is. At this point, I wanna carve pretty accurately down to um, my lines that I described before with my template because after the next step, we're getting very close to gluing the whole thing up. And again, this birch, even though it's dry, that's another very big advantage of birch as we're working here um, first with green, but now with cured birch. If this was a very, very tough hardwood, like fruit woods, like I did before in Japan with Sakura, it, it really is a tough carve at this point. But um, I'm enjoying myself a lot here. All right, so in comes this hard plastic um, piece that I usually use for embossing leather and 120 grit sandpaper. You can do this with 60, 80, 100, 120, it's depending a little bit, but 120 is a pretty good point um, to start and not rough it too much, yet have very nice um, surface for the glue later. And this is already it, basically. Um, what I just did is just flattening the two shoulders completely true and then checking it on the flat surface. After the sanding, there's of course a little bit of depth loss. Sometimes I'm just start deep enough that after the sanding, nothing is necessary, no adjustments. But here, I just gotta um, reestablish the depth. Here, I'd like to remind you to go to woodsmansfinest.com and check out my custom knives, leather work, and of course my spoons and cooksa. Support the channel on patreon.com forward slash woodsmansfinest and use my Amazon links if you wanna get any of these knife blades, any carving equipment, outdoor equipment, bushcraft stuff. Whatever I'm using is in those shops. Craft is my livelihood, folks. 
and you make possible that it stays that way. So thank you very much for the support. Well, back to the subject matter. Pretty good fit, I'd say. Not too shabby. So that was the one side. On the other side, I did some extra work too. These sheaths are not like a Japanese saya. They don't have to fit 100% um, true, even with um, a friction fit or something like that. So if you have a little bit more space than you need in there, this is actually quite comfortable in use later because you don't constantly wanna find your um, your liner inside. So what I do here is I'm just chamfering the mouth a little bit. So if you insert it later in the leather part, um, you're not constantly searching for the mouth of the sheath. This is very quickly done and it's basically just one cut and then a second one to just round the shoulders off a little bit. There you go, one stop cut on each side at a 45 degree angle, two cuts, and that's pretty much it. So I'm just doing a test fit here. You can shine light inside very easily as well to just see if everything is parallel lining up inside. I like what I see. And there you go. A little bit of wiggle room inside. And then you can just use any regular or if there is regular um, wood glue. Anything you can get at a good hardware store is usually good enough for this. Um, don't put on too much because it's just gonna squeeze out left and right. But just a decent amount that's just gonna cover everything 100%. I wiggle back and forth as well a little bit just to spread the glue. And then usually these wood glues are actually quite quick so I'm just putting one of my one-handed clamps on there. Not too much pressure though, because I don't want all of the glue just squeezing out left and right. And then just a second clamp, very lightly actually. It's a big one, so just the weight of it actually helped. Well, that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next episode when we finish Carve This Baby. Cheers.